The Supreme Court has ordered a status quo on the Reserve Bank of India's February 12th circular on bad loans. So as of today, power, shipping and sugar companies will have a two-month window for the resolution of large stressed assets in their sectors. This circular had imposed a 180-day deadline for resolving uh, cases uh, where the stress is over uh, 2,000 crores. Failing this, they were supposed to end up at the National Company Law Tribunals. Hello and welcome to our special show, Breaking Bad Debt. I'm Lata Venkatesh and over the next 30 minutes, uh, we are going to discuss the impact of this order on the entire debt resolution process, the bad debt resolution process and whether this uh, judgment or this uh, uh, stay from the Supreme Court is a setback to the insolvency and bankruptcy process and to the loan resolution process itself. Joining me uh, to discuss this are Behram Vakil, founder, partner, AZB and partners, RK Bansal, managing director at Edelweiss uh, ARC and former ED of uh, IDBI Bank, Cyril Shroff, managing partner at Amar Chand Mangaldas and Sandeep Parik, founder of FinSec Law Advisors and former chief legal advisor to the Indian Banks Association, Mr. M.R. Umarji. Uh, gentlemen, that's uh, uh, an extremely elite panel and thank you very much for joining me. Well, Mr. Shroff, let me start with you. Uh, do you think this uh, is, uh, uh, you know, effectively a setback because uh, uh, this removes the fear? It somehow smells so much like Sarfesi, which started so well for two years and then just got into the rut of hearings and adjournments and stays. No, I think that would be an overstatement uh, because it sounds uh, like just a, a, a two-month uh, hiatus. Uh, I, do, I think we should not overstate the impact uh, of uh, of this order. Yes, it certainly does uh, affect the timetable, mm -hmm. uh, and it's too early to uh, come to the conclusion that uh, this is going down a familiar uh, path of uh, hearings and adjournments and, and, and delays. Uh, I, I can understand probably the reason why the Supreme Court may have uh, passed this order in this case today, mm. but we should wait before we uh, pass any uh, sort of more enduring or long-term comment on this. Uh, that's, that's my initial view. Okay, well, that's a positive view, but let me get uh, uh, kind of the semi-lawyer and the person who had uh, contributed a lot to the even the writing of the IBC code, uh, Mr. M. R. Umarji, formerly advisor to the Indian Banks Association, the legal advisor. Uh, Mr. Umarji, what is your sense? You know, until now, the courts always said we are not stalling the uh, hearings in the NCLT, but uh, we will hear your case. That's how the Supreme Court and even the high courts uh, attended to all the NCLT cases. They did not give a stay in the IBC process. Now, of course, this is not IBC. This is an RBI circular. But, uh, uh, you know, even then, this is giving a stay. Uh, therefore, do you think that, uh, you know, it stalls the process of resolution? No, it's not a setback. You see, it's just the circular in effect says that work out a resolution plan for a company under stress and within the period stipulated in the circular, if you do not prepare the resolution plan and get it approved, you file the petition under for insolvency resolution before NCLT. This is, this is what circular says. Now, the effect of the Supreme Court order is that that filing of the insolvency petition is deferred for, for the period for which the extension has been granted. Now, there could be cases where defaults are committed two years back, three years back. The banks are still contemplating what action to take, whether to rec recover money by enforcing security under the Surface Act or file a debt recovery petition or file an insolvency petition. So it is, it is just deferring the action. There is no, no stay as such, actually. It is stay of the directions given by the RBI. And it could be possible that if you wait for some more time and make efforts, it is possible that a resolution plan could be worked out and got approved without going to a I mean, uh, filing an in, in insolvency resolution petition. 
I, not everyone is so sanguine, Mr. Umar. I don't I, see. Okay. Okay, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Of the proceedings and all. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I get your point. You don't see it as a major setback, but there are some people who see it at least as a possibility of a setback. Uh, I can tell you, Mr. Umarji. I've been speaking to uh, uh, some investment bankers and uh, people involved in the entire resolution process. And uh, there is a lot of despondency that, you know, a lot of foreign fronts, uh, Cerebrus, uh, uh, Cantor Fitzgerald, uh, uh, Brookfield, there are a lot of people wanting to commit money and believing that as the September 11 deadline strikes, I mean, it's exactly on that day that a further two months is given. And who is to say that another two months may not be given? Or the court says that, you know, the entire process uh, has to be, the entire case has to be heard. Uh, you know, uh, this is the political risk that uh, a lot of people attach to developing countries. What, what's your sense, Sandeep Parekh? Uh, has this pulled a thread from the middle of the fabric? I, I think there is an issue for sure. I mm. think uh, the whole... I think if you see all the discussions around the introduction of the IBC, they've all been about the time being sacrosanct. So I think uh, this this does kind of, as you put it nicely, pull pull the thread out of the fabric uh, from the middle. So I think uh, this will uh, cause some disruption. But again, I won't be uh, very pessimistic. I think mm -hmm. I agree with Mr. Umarji that uh, uh, certainly, you know, these, these are processes which have mm -hmm. been uh, brought about to ease the problem in terms of whether it should be resolution or whether it should be restructuring. Okay. Uh, so I think a uh, complete blanket, uh, this thing also is not appropriate, but at the same time, I think uh, the, the timing has, needs to be sacrosanct. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And even now, you know, in a, in a lot of cases, the court said don't count the hearing time. Uh, they were considerate, but uh, by stretching uh, uh, the limits, by saying don't count the hearing time and then you will still uh, count 180 days. Uh, now even that is not there. So the 180 days goes completely out of the window and then it's only a short step for the entire, uh, even the IBC process uh, to be similarly challenged. Uh, uh, Mr. Bansal, you would be in the midst of a lot of such negotiations with uh, a lot of parties. Uh, isn't this creating despondency? I heard very clearly that uh, uh, foreign funds were despondent. Well, let us understand this uh, whole thing in Supreme Court started basically from power projects mainly. No, but, it is power, uh, sugar, and uh, what is that shipping? Uh, Mr. Bansal? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you... So, yeah. So, basically, it was initially started like that, but it is expanded in Supreme Court. But Supreme Court is not stopped. I, as I understand, the mm. judgment was that if anybody wants to file, they are free to file in NCLT. Mm. It was not actually complete... Uh, uh, stoppage or something that uh, you nobody can go to NCLT. Okay. So, but I have to read this. So I, what I got finally feedback from the people who were there. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Uh, it was like this that uh, if anybody wants to go to NCLT also, they are free to go. Okay. So it okay. is not complete stop. Okay. So it is just that RBI cannot mandate, but a bank under IBC or any operational creditor for that matter, a financial or operational creditor can take people to uh, NCLT if uh, people renege on their loans. Uh, is yeah. that how we should understand it, Behram? That uh, if I as a banker or a non-banking creditor has found someone reneging, uh, I can take them to court. Uh, uh, only RBI cannot mandatorily push. Is that the way we should understand it? Yeah, thanks, Lata. I mean, I, I certainly hope that Cyril and Mr. Omarji are right. Uh, as Cyril says, we should, you know, uh, not jump to premature conclusions and uh, see how it plays out. But I'm, I'm just worried uh, that uh, that the timing, uh, both from a general macro level, which uh, you would be uh, the real expert at. When we, uh, when the inflows, foreign capital inflows are so critical, and mm. when everyone was looking at India as one of the best places mm. for investment in this space, mm. uh, I hope this is just a short setback, and they don't feel that oh no, this is back to the same old delays, mm. and uh, stop the believing. So it will take us. It will definitely. Me, make us have to work much, much harder mm. to convince them just at the point that they were ready to sign some sizable check. 
Uh, I mean, to answer your question, uh, the one silver lining in my day was that Chennai today did not give a stay or any relief okay. uh, to uh, ILFS uh, okay. power, okay. even after hearing the Supreme Court. So, yes, SBI is free to uh, file. Mm. And uh, all the others uh, who are not affected by this status quo are certainly free to file. Okay. But uh, we have to see now how... how how much uh, uh, ripple effect it has in NCLT and other courts. Okay. Uh, what, what would you say, Mr. Shroff? Uh, uh, can a co uh, can't a banker sue a motor take a, um, uh, a case, a defaulter to court now? Uh, it's only RBI whose uh, uh, circular has been stayed, but IBC has not been stayed. So with the disclaimer that I have not seen the uh, actual text of the order and I'm just going by... I believe you I could not have seen sources. because it's not available, sir. Yes. <laughs> I know, I know. So I'm just going again by what is anecdotally mm -hmm. uh, sort of said about the order. So I would agree with that view that it's only the compulsion uh, that RBI could impose on uh, directing uh, the, uh, the the banks to sort of take a case into a, uh, into IBC hmm. that has been stayed so in a form of a status quo order hmm. but that certainly does not prevent hmm. uh, a, a a bank from on its own if it thinks in its wisdom hmm. uh, that it needs to go to NCLT so I I, I think the, what will happen is there will be two types of cases hmm. those which are on the verge of some kind of a resolution in the pre-NCLT stage where with a, with a with a little bit of time and a couple of more days mm. they would be able to uh, to strike a restructuring mm. so those i think will benefit from this yeah. but there could be a bunch of cases which are hopeless mm. uh, or where even the two months is not going to make a difference mm. i think banks will be free to take a call there okay okay uh, and in any event i i i so i don't think we should assume that this is a endless series of two month uh, adjournments let's just take each step at a time Okay, well, let me see if the other members are as uh, uh, confident. Uh, uh, well, Sandeep clearly was not. Mr. Umarji, uh, let me take that question to you. Uh, what are the possibilities that in November, when the hearing resumes, November 11th, uh, uh, there is a further uh, status quo granted till the entire hearing is complete? Would you treat that as the biggest setback, uh, but not this one? No, the entire effort is to find a solution to the problem. And many of these are power projects where the main cause for the problem is not getting supply of coal or gas or other problems of the infrastructure projects. And it could be that some solution could be found by the Supreme Court to these problems and a resolution plan could be worked out with the other issues being resolved. So I don't see, because you see, uh, the, 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 there was an issue about applicability of Limitation Act to the proceedings to before NCLT. And that has been now clear, cleared by the new, uh, recent amendment. So there is three years time available after default to file the insolvency resolution application for the banks. So it's just deferring, deferring the actual action of uh, uh, filing an ins insolvency resolution petition. But the whole object is to find a solution to the problem, which the companies have their own issues. They may bring it before the Supreme Court. Government will have its own say, and then it may be, it is possible that the whole problem may be resolved. Well, I must say, uh, Mr. Overji, that's a lot of uh, confidence you exude. Uh, for four years, we have not seen DISCOMs reducing their uh, uh, ATNC losses. Uh, for the last four years, uh, uh, we have not seen them being able to sign fresh PPAs because they don't have money. Uh, are we really to expect that in two months, uh, so many miracles will happen? Uh, well, if, if that is how it is treated, that in two months, we've got this wonderful unexpected reprieve and we can, you know, push in some cases before the NCLT, uh, that's, uh, of course, a, a great interpretation. But I really need to ask whether this changes the behavior of promoters. You know, the way in which the IBC cases were handled by the judiciary and the way in which the Reserve Bank continued to keep the pressure on bankers to seek resolution to stressed assets. You know, promoters came to the table. There were numbers thrown around that some 85,000 crore of one-time settlements have, had, have happened. These are government numbers. 
Now, does the fear go out of promoters to come and negotiate? That question to my panelists after a very quick break. We are back.